Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, right now I'm going to go over a quick video that I had planned. It is a little bit overdue. I promised one of the one of my viewers that uh, that I was going to make this video, and it's long overdue, and so I'm going to go ahead and do it. And today, what I'm going to show is how to change the atom the atomic identity of an element in Vesta. Um, if you're familiar with making uh, um, quantum chemistry input files or quantum or computational chemistry input files using VESTA, this, this video will be a breeze for you. But actually, it is slightly non-trivial, and so I'm just going to go through and show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and open this unit cell I have available. This is sodium chloride. And um, so what I'm going to do is I would save it as a VASP, okay, which I've already done and opened. And so here, what I will do now is open it up. And so the question is, how do you change the atomic identity of the elements in this crystal? And so you see here, this is our standard VASP input file for viewing in VESTA. And we have our two atomic species. We have sodium and chlorine, and there's four atoms each. So what this tells you is that because there's the first four are sodium and then the second four are chlorine, We'll have these first four atomic coordinates correspond to sodium, and these last four correspond to chlorine. If I were to switch these, like chlorine and sodium, then what we should expect to see is that anywhere there's a sodium or chlorine in here, these should be swapped, right? Okay, let's check and see if this is the case. So let's save this and exit out open up our new uh, structure and you can see here that our two oops that our two crystals are have everything swapped. Here's the corner and this is the corner here and this is the corner on this side. So basically what I'm saying, is that if you want to change the atomic identity in your input file, you need to change uh, these here. So now let's say I wanted to make this magnesium. That would mean that the first four, these first four are magnesium. Let's say I wanted the first two to be sodium and the second two to be potassium. I would do this. Two sodium, two potassium, and then let's do two chlorine, and then two bromine. Just being neat. <clears throat> okay, so what does this mean? This means that the first two here are sodium, the next two are potassium, the next two are chlorine, and the final two are bromine. If I wanted this atom to be an iodine, then I would, I would make it like this. And so basically how this corresponds to is it looks like this. First two are sodium, then we have potassium, then chlorine, and then chlorine, and then iodine, or iodine, and then bromine. So this is, this is what it corresponds to, except when you want to visualize it in Vesta, you would not put these atomic identities here. Okay, you'd have to delete them. But if you wanted to then take this input file or these atomic coordinates into a quantum chemistry software package like Quantum Espresso, you'd have to re-add in the atomic coordinates. So you eventually would have to do this anyways. But for now, let's save this. Let's open it. And so you can see here, uh, I have all of my elements. Let's see which one is which. This will be the sodium, the chlorine, this is on the corner here. So this is a bromine. And we only have one bromine, right? Because an edge is one fourth. Let's double check this. That's one bromine. Um, we have uh, one iodine. So iodine should also be an edge. It'll be here. This is iodine, also an edge. Um, Let's see, this is 
sodium. Sodium is a face. A face is one half. So we have two faces. That's going to be one sodium. And then corners, one eighth. We have eight corners. So it should be two sodiums. We have two sodiums, which we knew anyways. But OK, so I know this is a relatively like simple video for some people who might be more advanced in VESTA um, or making atomic input atomic structure input files in VESTA, but um, it's actually not non-trivial. I mean, you wouldn't really know this. This isn't something I, 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 just, I, I actually figured this out, uh, not immediately. It took me some time to actually realize this. Uh, so I, I hope this video was helpful. Um, let's say you wanted to make, yeah, yeah, basically you want to change the atomic identity. You just change, you just change uh, this here, change the number underneath, and they, they go down, uh, in the order you have them from left to right. So like I said, you'd have your sodium here and then your potassium and so on and so forth. Okay, I think the rest is uh, self-explanatory. Thank you for watching. I will have, my next videos will be on, we'll be using quantum espresso to compute uh, absorption spectra. Uh, we'll first be doing it with water, which is just a uh, single molecule. Uh, it's probably not the best to do, use quantum espresso to, to do water uh, because quantum espresso is a plane wave uh, DFT code and you could use like a better basis set for a single molecule. It's, it's not really periodic uh, and of course we use the plane waves for periodicity. In any case you can still do it with quantum espresso. I'll also do it with a software called IQMOL and we'll compare the two and then in a follow-up video from that we'll do it using uh, uh, a crystal structure. Okay thank you and take care.